This one is called the Pipe Maze, and you land on the this floating metal island, and it's covered in all types of different pipes. And your job is to we're gonna figure out some stuff about these different pipes, and we're supposed to be tracking down a critter, some metal critter that like scurried off. And the pipes are in a map that is the result of our note taking, and we've drawn vertical pipes like this vertical bar symbol then we have a dash as a horizontal pipe and l j 7 f these are all different types of pipes and then there's s which is our starting position and if we encounter a period that is just like the ground and there's no pipe on that tile and we need to figure out how to navigate through this grid of pipes and it turns out that there is one giant large continuous loop and our first step is to figure out what is the furthest point from the starting point that is inside the loop. So what I did was just draw my way around the loop, count up all the different positions in the loop, and then divide by two. And that kind of gives us the farthest distance in the loop from our starting position. So let's grab this example here, and we'll open up main.rb, and we'll start that as our input. Here we go. Okay, the first thing we want to do is split this up. So we'll say data is input dot each line dot map chomp. And then for each of those, we're going to get some grid. And our grid is going to be data dot map to characters. I think that should give us something to work with here. We want to see. All right, so now we've got a bunch of characters. Our grid is an array of arrays where each row has all of the different pipe connectors for that row. So we're encountering ground, ground, then an F pipe, which means like the pipe connects from the bottom and from the right. And then we have a seven pipe, which connects from the bottom and to the left. And then we have ground, so on and so forth. As you're reading through this instructions, the set of instructions, you'll notice that like an L is a 90 degree bend J, 7, and F, these all represent 90 degree bends pointing to different directions. And then vertical is just up and down, so it's going to connect north and south. Horizontal is going to connect east and west. And first of all, we need to figure out our starting point. So start is going to be grid.each with index, find row, row include, or row.index or something of s does that give us our start nope so let's just do it the let's do it the manual way so grid dot each with index do row and then row dot each with index i don't know why but i like using x and y even though they're not really x and y so everything is transposed we'll just say if the cell is equal to x then the x y or then start is equal to x y all right so two zero so that would give us row number two and column zero. So that looks good. So this is gonna give us our starting point. Then from our starting point, we need to figure out how to traverse. So from the start, technically we don't know whether or not we're gonna be able to go north, south, east, or west. So we need to figure out what is connected to the start and is a valid out path. What we can do is start with all of the different cardinal directions here and create sort of like a start exits so we can create a list of start exits from the start if there is a j to the right then that is a valid exit because j can connect like to the left and for this start because we have a pipe right below us that can connect to the north so we could connect from this from start to the south so these two are technically like known as the directions we're gonna go from the start. But for our actual input, we might have an S that's plopped in the middle of nowhere. So we need all the valid directions from any given point. And then we can go around all the neighbors of S and find the ones where S is a valid destination from the neighbors. So let's let's just say like def neighbors and we're gonna give it the, the grid and we'll give it some point. And here we can go through all of the directions and uh, grab the ones that are valid neighbors. In fact, like depending on what kind of point it is, it's going to have some set of directions. Again, if it's a J, 
then it can go, we can go up. So that means that we want to go negative one rows and zero columns, or it can go to the left, which is zero row changes and a, a negative one column change. So these are the directions that are valid for J. We'll go through and fill them out for L. So L can go up and in the same column, or it can go stay in the same row and move to the right. Seven, you go to the left, so in the same row, and back column, or you go down, which is one row down in columns. F, you can go to the right, to the same row, you can go down, which is uh, down rows in column, or you can go up, down, dash, and go down, up. Dot can go nowhere. And then the S, for now, we're, we're going to say that this, the S can go nowhere, and we'll have to like manually manage how S works. So what we want to do is go through the valid directions for a given point. In this case, we want to grab like the pipe at grid of X, Y. And then we want to index into DERS at that pipe and map over X, DX, and Y, DY to get back the neighbors. So we need to go through all possible directions around S and then find if their neighbors include the starts. But we'll just go through each of these and say if, so this is actually gonna give us like a, an S, an S neighbor, which is the start plus DX and the start plus DY. If, um, if the neighbors of the S neighbor include the start, then add those to the start exits. And now we have some start exits. Okay, so can we leave at three zero and two one? That's the question. Can we leave at three zero or two one? Yes, those are the correct ones because we can either leave through this J or through this pipe as we're leaving the start point. There are some other examples in here too, which we could grab onto. So like this could be another input. I believe. Yeah. So let's pop this in here. Okay. One, one, that is the start point. And then our exits could be, uh, zero one. Actually that's not valid. So L does L have the right stuff here? So L can go to the North. This is actually just negative, negative one. Cause we can go North or zero, one, which means we can go to the right. Okay, let's try this again. All right, two, one, one, two. So from here, we can go to two, one, or one, two. All right, so that's correct. All right, so we might have to go back through here and double check all of our different directions, but for now, that's gonna give us our start exits. Now what we wanna do is just grab one of those start exit points and start like traversing around and that should all be connected into a giant loop. So until we come back around to the beginning. So now that we have these start exits, let's say that like our start point is start exits dot first and we want to go, yeah, we're going to have some list of like our actual pipe and our pipe is going to start with the start point and the start. And we're going to use a set here just so that we have a little bit faster operation when we're checking to see if something is still in the pipe. We're gonna start with the start point. So while the uh, start point does not equal um, start exits dot last. So that should be like the other connector into S, right? So S is gonna have two things that are valid and that are connected to it. One is going to be the start point that we're going to start traversing the pipe around. The other will be the, the end connector that goes back to start. So we're saying while the start point doesn't equal the end point, keep going. So we're going to grab the neighbors of um, passing in the grid and the current start point dot each do neighbor. And for each neighbor, if the pipe, so if the set of 
connectors does not already include the neighbor. We're going to add it to that, to the pipe. And then we're going to set the start point to that neighbor. And then we're going to break. And that should, um, actually, I don't know if we want to break here or not. So at the end, we should just have P pipe, and that should include all of the different things that are in the pipe. Okay. So two, one, one, one. All right. Let's, let's also put input just so we can see. So we're starting here at S and then we're going to two, one. So this, we're going to this bottom one and then one, one, which means that we're going back to the start. So maybe this is our start node. This is our start. Yeah. Let's actually, to make this a little bit easier to follow, we'll put start and then start point in a different order there in the beginning. Okay, so we start at one one, that's our starting point. Then two one. Two one is this bot this bottom bar. Then three one is the L. Then three two is this pipe. Then three three is J. Then two three is this pipe. Then okay, good. So we're we went around the circle. That looks great. And now what we want to do is put like p dot or pipe dot size. So how long was this thing? So eight. So the answer for part one would be like size divided by two, because that's like the farthest from that point. So if we come down here and we look at the input here for this example, it was four. And for this other example, let's grab this other one and see, we should get eight, three. Hmm. We have something incorrect here. All right. So for this complex loop, what have we got? Okay. Our answer is coming out as seven. So let's print the input and then we'll P the pipe again. And we end up with two zero, two zero, and then three zero, three zero, four zero, four one. Three one, three two. Okay, so then from here something happened. When we went from three two, we ended up at two one somehow. But two one is incorrect. Three two to two one. So neighbor of three one, which is F, gives us three two and two one. Okay, so F is going the wrong way. F is pointing the wrong way. F, if we're in the same row, we go up one column or we go down a row. Yep. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. We got our, we had our, we had a bug in our data. F again should have gone the, yeah, it should have gone down. I think it was going up. So now we can do P dot size divided by two. And we get eight. Fantastic. Okay. We don't need to print the pipe anymore. All right. And we can take out this debugging. Okay. Great. All right. So now what we want to do is run this against our real input. So now we can grab our puzzle input, paste it at the bottom run ruby main.rb actually now we have to say data is data dot read lines dot map chomp and six five nine nine cross our fingers six five nine nine is part one okay so that is the solution for part one you you basically go around the entire loop find out how long it is divide by two that gives you the furthest steps from the starting position to the farthest point from the starting position along the pipe all right, part two. This is this got really tricky in my opinion. It was hard to figure out. Our goal now is to figure out what is the area that is enclosed inside of the loop. So in this case, this example loop has a start point and then it goes around and around and around and around and back to S. And when you look at this, you might wonder, are all of these 10 dots that are inside of this upper section? Are those enclosed in the loop? And the answer is no. 
But these two and these two are because they are in, they're on the inside of this polygon that's defined by all these different points. So if you look at this example here, you'll see that the I's are inside the loop and the O's are outside the loop. And so in this larger example, it shows, okay, so if this was the input, um, only there's a couple of tiles in here that are inside the loop. And then there's one over here and one over here. So there's one here and one here that are inside the loop, but otherwise they're outside. So in this case, you've got to count up all of the tiles that are inside of the loop, and that will give you your answer. There is a, an algorithm called the ray casting algorithm or point and polygon. And I think this is probably like the best example to th uh, for how to think about this is that you're going to, we're going to look at all the different points on the entire grid. And we're going to count from that point all the way to the right. And we're going to look to see how many times we intersect with a wall. And depending on the number of times we intersect with the wall, that will let us know whether or not we're inside or outside. Because if we go from the left and we intersect, you can kind of like think about a, cir a circle, right? If you start on one side of the circle, and you cross, you cross the boundary once, and then you cross the boundary again, then you're on the outside of the circle. If you start on the inside of the circle and you're going to the left, then you'll only cross once, right? And so what you can basically do is count up how many times am I encountering a wall? And for the number of times that I encounter a wall, if it's odd, then I was inside. If it's even, I was outside. However, this becomes a little trickier because you can squeeze through a pipe. It doesn't have to have a, in this case, it doesn't have to have a full tile path outside of the tiles to count as being inside or outside of the loop. So in this case, if you look at this, the seven and F are right next to each other. These two pipes are right next to each other. This J and L are right next to each other, but these are technically not called enclosed in the loop. And so you could squeeze between here to find something outside the loop. So my thought process was iterate over each, like every single point. And what I'm going to do is count the number of times that I encounter a wall. In this case, if we, if we look at this example here, so this wall is north, south. This wall is really just south technically because if something could squeeze in between the top of this and something else it just really blocks the south and then we have a bunch of lines or like a bunch of connectors that are east west those don't those don't really count as walls and then we have this other wall that is technically blocking to the south but not to the north and then we have a north south block and then we have an end so if we started here we would count one north and one south then we would count one south and then another south so we have three south and then here we have another south and another north so we end up with two north and four south facing blockers and then because they're even um and really in that case we can just take the minimum and because they're even we know that we are outside. If instead we take one of these inside points and we're going to go just to the right. So here we have north, south, north, south, north, south. So there's three north and three south blocks here because that's odd. We know we're inside. So that's the rationale is we're just going to count up how many walls we encounter, take the minimum of the north facing walls versus the south facing walls and then if it's odd we know we're inside if it's not odd we are outside all right so how does this work so for this part um what i want to do is i want to iterate through um we'll just say like this is uh part one so we're going to continue reusing our same pipe structure but now what we want to do is we want to like just create a new grid that only has our pipe on the grid. So I'm going to say like clean grid is going to be array.new 
of grid size, grid size. And then I'm just going to have spaces inside the grid to start out. Okay, so this gives us a n by n array that matches the existing grid. Then we want to go through pipe dot each do, yeah. And instead of x, I mean, we could do x now and just say pipe dot each do row p or like puts row dot join. And this would give us an idea of what it looks like. Puts, that's not what it looks like. Oh, clean, clean grid. Yeah. What is here? Let's P. What's our pipe again? Our pipe is this set. Pipe dot each do X, Y. Clean grid at X, Y. P clean grid. Okay. Clean grid dot each with index row dot each with index print cell puts okay so this is what that example looks like where the x's are our pipe so we're really just in that case finding that one empty spot in the middle let's use this larger example that they've given us just to see if we can figure this out a little better all right, so this is interesting looking, right? So we've got X's where our pipe went. And then inside of here, you see this like section, which is gonna be filled in with our insides, right? That's gonna be like the stuff that's on the inside of the loop. Yeah, okay, so that's just to kind of like get an idea of what it looks like. Instead of putting an X though, we actually need to know what pipe is there because we need to know whether or not it's blocking North and South or just South or just North. So, what we can do in this case is set clean grid at X, Y to grid at X, Y. And this shows us the pipe connectors where they are and we are doing well. Okay, so now what we wanna do is go through clean grid each with index. Actually, we'll just use the same thing, okay? So for each element, like each for each cell that we look at, uh, we want to skip it if it's in the pipe, right? We don't actually want to look at cells that are that are on the pipeline itself. We only want to look at cells that are either outside or inside. So we'll say next if pipe includes X, Y. Okay, that will skip, skip the cells in the pipeline. Okay, so now we're going to start from the point of the cell and we're going to work our way all the way to the end of that row. So what we want to do here is do like y up to row dot size dot each, and that's going to give us a new column, right? And as we're going through, we want to count north facing blockers and count south facing blockers, okay? If grid or clean grid at X, Y2 is in the list of north facing blockers, so we'll have to make a list. Then we want to like increment north, otherwise we'll increment south. And then we're gonna have some counter for each, for every single cell we need a counter. So north is equal to zero and south is equal to zero. Okay. So north facing blockers is going to be like J, right? Because that's going to be blocked to the north. L is blocked to the north. Pipe is blocked to the north. And S is unknown. We actually need to replace S with whatever connector type it would probably be. But for now, we'll just keep it as is. Or we can, we can come back and, and take a look later. And then we'll count the south. So the south facing ones are going to be F um, seven and the pipe. Okay. So if the, again, remember that we can take the minimum of the two, that's going to really be the number of things that we're encountering. If the minimum is minimum, so if north south dot min is odd, 
that that means we're like inside inside plus equals one. So it's like an inside count is going to be incremented by one. Let's also keep track of the actual points. So inside cell is going to be X, Y. Okay. So we'll just keep track of a list of inside cells here. And we'll also keep track of the inside count. And at the end, we should print out inside and P inside cells. And 151, that seems wrong. Ah, okay. What we kind of need to do is look at our start. What I did was I just printed out start. And start here is zero four. So then I went to zero, one, two, three, four. Where is start S? Oh, zero. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four. And then I like just looked at it and I said, okay, from here, from this specific start, we can go to the left or down. So technically the start in this input example is a seven, which means that it blocks to the south, but not to the north. So then I would add S into my south blockers here. This is definitely not the way that, yeah, it's, this is not a great solution. Okay, so 151 is definitely wrong, right? So that's what we're getting though. So what is the deal? 151. It thinks there's 151 that match that that match inside cells. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Maybe I'm off by one here. 161. I believe for this example, it should just be 10. Also, why? Oh, inside cells is being set. Okay. We want to shovel in inside cells. Okay. One, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Why is it adding those a bunch of times? Hmm. So we're going through our clean grid. And let's print X with a space. And then we'll print the cell. And then at the end, we'll print new line and a dollar sign just to know that we made it to the end of something. Okay. So, hmm. Print the cell. Does this also need to be self-facing? No. Hmm. Let's assume it blocks both directions. Okay. Okay. North is one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you know what? I think. Hmm. Oh, shoot. This check here needs to be outside of this loop. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 11. All right. Getting warmer. Okay. So it should be 10. Why does it think it's 11? It, for some reason, it thinks zero, zero should be inside there, but it definitely should not be inside there. What? Okay, so let's take out some of this print business. Okay, so three, why does it think zero, zero should be in there? So one, two, three. Oh, because it thinks, yeah, so. Right, all right. So in this case, in this specific puzzle input, because S is, a, is equal to a seven, we only want it to be on south facing blockers so let's run it on our actual input here okay so our actual input let's look and try to find the start so 2631 so i actually did this for for my input i just found the s so i went here and in vim i said 26 j 31 oops 31 l and i found my s right here and then i said okay how is this thing connected all right it looks like it can connect to the seven above it, right? It can go to the north or it can go to the south. So S in the case of my actual input is a pipe, which means it should be considered in both of these. This is not sustainable or valid, right? We should probably build a way to figure out what are the valid paths out. And if it's 
if you can go up or down, then replace it with a pipe. If you can go left or right, replace it with, yeah, just got to replace it with the correct connector. But if we run it like this, we get back 477, which was the puzzle answer for part two. So this is super messy, but I thought this is cool to look at, right? Like you got your big old blob of a map and somewhere in here, there's a bunch of inside spots that are filled in. So that, my friends, is how you solve part 10. Quite messy, but I did learn a ton about this point in polygon ray casting algorithm. So that was neat. Yeah, this was tricky with the whole north and south blocker bits. And I think I was, I had an off by two error for a very long time and it was related to where one of these S's went. So it is a very, I don't know, it's like a little bit tricky to get it just right and to understand like how the pipes are all connecting. I've got a couple of different drawings here of all kinds of different loops. And if you start inside and you count how many north, south exits you end up with, how to, yeah, figure out this bit. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.